Classification and Structure of Matter Matter is made up of microscopic units called atoms. Chemical elements are composed of atoms of a certain type. The elements are classified depending on their chemical properties according to the periodic table of elements. If several atoms react with each other and form a stable unit by chemical bonds, these are called molecules. For example, water consists of the elements hydrogen and oxygen. In each case, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom join together in order to form a stable H2O molecule. Atomic units such as molecules, atoms, protons, neutrons or electrons are simply referred to as particles. In this context, one therefore often speaks of the so-called particle model, with which one describes the structure of matter. So note. In the particle model, the structure of matter is described with the help of particles, without differentiating between atoms or molecules. A water molecule, for example, which consists of several atoms, is thus regarded as a single water particle in the particle model. According to Rutherford's atomic model, atoms consist of a positively charged atomic nucleus and a negatively charged electron shell. The nucleus contains positively charged protons. These protons are the reason for the positive charge of the atomic nucleus. The acting repulsive force between the protons is balanced by the strong attractive forces of the neutrons, which are also present in the atomic nucleus. Although the neutrons themselves are electrically neutral, they nevertheless exert a strong attractive force on the protons. In this way, the protons are held together stably in the nucleus. The attraction between the protons and the neutrons cannot be caused by an electrostatic field because neutrons do not carry electric charges and therefore cannot be affected by such a field. It is rather another type of force. This force is called strong nuclear force or strong interaction. Along with the electromagnetic force, the gravitational force and the weak nuclear force, also called weak interaction, the strong nuclear force is one of the four fundamental forces of physics. The interaction of the strong nuclear force is very limited in range, but at small distances as in atomic nuclei, that force can be extremely strong. The strong interaction between the protons and neutrons is the reason why this nuclear force outweighs the repulsive electrostatic forces of the protons and thus holds the nucleus together. The strong interaction is the clue for the nucleus so to speak. The electron shell is located around the positively charged nucleus of an atom. It is formed by the negatively charged electrons. In a simplified model, the electrons in this imaginary shell orbit the positive atomic nucleus. The electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive nucleus and the negative electrons ensure that the orbiting electrons are held stably on their path around the atomic nucleus, so that the atom does not fall apart. Characteristic for a particular type of atom, or for a chemical element, is the number of protons in the nucleus. The number of protons essentially determines the chemical behavior of the element and is responsible for the order in the periodic table. The number of protons is referred to as atomic number. A hydrogen atom, for example, always has one proton in its nucleus. If it had two or three protons in its nucleus, it would no longer be a hydrogen atom, but a helium atom with two protons, or a lithium atom with three protons. However, the number of neutrons is not characteristic for a chemical element. For example, a lithium atom usually has four neutrons in its nucleus. However, this only applies to 92.5% of all lithium atoms. The remaining 7.5% of lithium atoms found in nature contain only three neutrons in the nucleus. Such variations of atoms, which belong to the same chemical element and thus have the same number of protons, but have a different number of neutrons, are also called isotopes. The lithium atom thus has two stable isotopes. The hydrogen atom even has three isotopes. The most common hydrogen isotope with 99.98% is the one without a neutron in the nucleus. This hydrogen atom therefore has only one proton as a nucleon and is therefore also called protium. If the hydrogen has a neutron in the nucleus besides the proton, this isotope is called deuterium. Deuterium accounts for only 0.015% of all hydrogen atoms found in nature. Another hydrogen isotope even has two neutrons in its nucleus and is called tritium. This isotope accounts for only a tiny fraction of total hydrogen in nature. 
Unlike protium and deuterium, however, tritium is not stable and decays to helium-3 with a half-life of about 12 years. Because of the decay, tritium is therefore radioactive. Radioactivity is the spontaneous decay of unstable atoms into other more stable atoms by emitting radiation. This radiation can be very dangerous in high doses. In the electrically neutral state, there are just as many positively charged protons in the nucleus as there are electrons in the shell. The electric charge of an electron and a proton is identical in magnitude, but with the opposite sign. From a macroscopic point of view, the electrostatic effects thus cancel each other out. In this state, the particle is electrically neutral. However, if this neutral state is disturbed by absorbing or removing electrons, the atom is called an ion. The process of adding or removing electrons is called ionization. With excess of electrons, the atom is negatively charged. A negatively charged ion is referred to as an anion. When an electron is absorbed, it is then a singly negatively charged anion. If two electrons are added, this is referred to as a doubly negatively charged ion. Conversely, a deficiency of electrons leads to a positively charged atom, which is then called a cation. In the case of a single positively charged cation, one electron is absent from the atomic shell. If two electrons are missing, one speaks of a doubly positively charged ion. Cations are smaller in size than their respective atom due to the deficiency of electrons, and anions are larger in size because of the excess of electrons. Note that the number of protons of an atom is specific for each element and therefore an ion can only be created by removing or adding electrons, but not by removing or adding protons. Because if you would change the number of protons, a completely different element would be created. From the perspective of material science, substances can be categorized at the macroscopic level into different groups, depending on their structural composition. First, one can distinguish between pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances contain only one type of particle. In the simplest case, particle means a chemical element. These include, for example, hydrogen, iron, or graphite consisting of pure carbon. Not only single atoms but also whole molecules can form pure substances. These substances are characterized by a certain atomic ratio and are referred to as chemical compounds. Pure compounds for example are water, carbon dioxide or acetone. If, on the other hand, substances consist of several different types of particles, they are referred to as mixtures. Such mixtures can be further divided into heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures have a uniform distribution of the different types of particles. These include, for example, gas mixtures such as air, shielding gases for welding or water vapor. Solutions are also homogeneous mixtures. In contrast to a gas mixture, the state of matter of a solution is liquid. Solutions include, for example, sugar water, salt water or carbonated water. Besides gases and liquids, solids can also form homogeneous mixtures. These include, for example, alloys such as copper-nickel alloys. In general, an alloy is a mixture of two substances, at least one of which is a metal. Mixtures of substances with an uneven distribution of the contained types of particles are referred to as heterogeneous mixtures. A mixture of a solid and a liquid is then referred to as a suspension. This includes, for example, iron sludge, quicksand or liquid concrete. Heterogeneous mixtures of different liquids that cannot be mixed homogeneously are called emulsions. A mixture of oil and water, for example, forms such an emulsion. In the food sector, milk or mayonnaise are examples of such emulsions. Heterogeneous mixtures of two or more solids, such as iron ore, granite or marble, are referred to as solid soles. Another category of heterogeneous mixtures are aerosols. These are mixtures of solids or liquids in gases. Examples of aerosols are cigarette smoke in air, clouds in atmosphere, or car exhaust fumes in air. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.